there are times when you might want to use classical control techniques for modeling, or maybe you have a system and you know the transfer function to it, but you want to analyze it using state space techniques. Whatever the situation is, there could be times when you have a transfer function and you want to convert it into a state space representation. So in this video, we will look at one technique for doing that procedure, and we're going to use what's known as phase variables. The outline of this video is that we'll start with phase variables, an introduction to what they are. Then we will dive into converting transfer functions to state space representation. First of all, for a transfer function with no zeros, and then secondly, we'll consider transfer functions with zeros. As long as there are fewer zeros than there are poles, we're okay. So if we are talking about transfer functions, we'll talk about an nth order transfer function, and that's the order of the denominator. And it's going to have a single input and a single output. When we want to put this into state space representation, we're going to choose state variables, x sub i, to be the output of the transfer function. And it's n minus 1 derivatives. And these variables are known as phase variables. So for example, if we have a system with output y, then the phase variables are given here. Our state variable, the first state variable, x sub 1, is y itself. Then we go and make the rest of the state variables be the derivatives of y. So x2 is dy dt, x3 is second derivative of y, all the way down to the n minus 1 derivative of y. And that's x sub n. Okay, if we're given the differential equation that describes the relationship between the input u and the output y, as shown here, again this is an nth order differential equation, then we're going to look here and see how this is how the phase variables are used in this case for the state equation. Again, the phase variables will be y and its derivatives, its n minus 1 derivatives. And so we want to form the state equations by taking the derivative of each of those variables. So here we have x1, which was our first state variable, which was y by definition, since we're using phase variables. Okay, x1 dot is equal to x2 is our first equation. x2 dot is equal to x3 is our second equation. All the way down to xn dot is equal to this summation. And this equation comes from the differential equation for the system, and we're just rearranging it to solve for xn dot. Remember, xn is the n minus 1 derivative of y, and so this term is xn dot. And so we just bring all these terms over to the right-hand side, and that gives us our final equation for the state equations. And this is the phase variable form of the state equations. And we can put this in a matrix form, and it's always going to look like this, where we have ones just off the diagonal, and then the bottom row is the negative coefficients. Now the output equation is the second part of our state space representation, and we were just defining the state variables as the phase variables, which is the output and its n minus 1 derivatives. Here's the state vector and the output is just x1 by definition. So this is the output equation. Let's look at an example. Say we're given this transfer function, we have 43 in the numerator, so no zeros, and s squared plus 9s plus 24 in the denominator. We're going to cross multiply, so we're multiplying c, sub c of s times the denominator and r of s times the numerator, and then we'll take the inverse Laplace transform in order to get a differential equation when we're assuming zero initial conditions. So we have c double dot plus 9 times c dot plus 24 times c. c is the output, so it's going to be our first state variable. We're going to use phase variables here. Our second state variable is c dot. And we are now going to write first order differential equations for these two variables. So x1 dot is equal to x2, and x2 dot comes from rearranging this equation. x2 dot is c double dot, so just bring these terms here over to the right-hand side, we get negative 24x1 minus 9x2, substituting in the state variables. x1 is c, and x2 is c dot. 
So here is our state equation, and then the output equation y is just x1, which is just c. So here is our state vector again. Now we're going to look at what to do if the numerator has zeros, or if there are zeros in the system. Here's a generic transfer function with zeros, and you see that it's a lower order than the denominator, the numerator is. So what we're going to do is consider the transfer function to be the result of two separate transfer functions cascaded. The first is 1 over the denominator of the original, and the second transfer function is the numerator of the original. Now we will choose, we'll find the state equations from this first transfer function, just as we did on the previous example, and we will treat x1, we'll create this variable x1 as the output of that first transfer function. Now the state variables are going to be the phase variables for x1. So x1, x1 dot, x1 double dot. And then the output equation will give us cs in terms of the state variables, x1, x1 dot, etc. Okay, so like I said, we're going to choose x1 and its derivatives as the state variables. Um, here's the state vector, x1, x1 dot, x1 double dot, and we're going to call these x1, x2, and x3. And then the second block gives us the output c in terms of the phase variables, so multiplying x1 times this transfer function and then taking the inverse Laplace transform gives us c in terms of x1 and x1 dot and x1 double dot. And I've called c y here just to keep with the convention for a state space. An example is given here. This is the same denominator as the previous example, but now we have a zero. And we will consider this as two transfer functions, g1 and g2. g1 is one over the denominator, and g2 is the numerator. Now we use g1 to get the state equations. So we have x1, which is the product of g1 and r. Uh, okay, so g1 is equal to x1 over r, and that's equal to 1 over s squared plus i s plus 24. So we'll cross multiply this equation, and then take the inverse Laplace transform, and that gives us this differential equation relating x1 and r. We'll use the state variables of x1, that is the phase variables of x1, to, oh yeah, use the phase variables of x1 to write the state equation. So we have x1 dot and x2 dot. Um, okay, so this is a mistake. No, it's not. It's just confusing having x1 be the first element of the state vector, but also be the name of this variable here. Anyway, x2 dot is equal to x1 double dot. So here's our state equation in matrix form. This is using the same technique as before. Mm, x1 dot is equal to x2, and x2 dot is shown here, and we uh, move these terms over to the right-hand side to get negative 24 times x1 minus 9 times x2 plus r. And we can use the equation y is equal to x1 times g2, and then take the inverse Laplace transform to get the output equation y, which is c, times g2 gives us 43, mm, wait, yeah, c2 is x1 times g2, so 43x1 dot plus 2x1 is equal to y. Now substituting in the definition for our state variables, x1 is x1, x1 dot is x2, and then putting it in a matrix form, we get our output equation. So we have this matrix for c, 2, and 43, and we multiply that by the state vector. And this example shows how to convert a transfer function with zeros into a state space representation using phase variables.